Spirit Releasement Therapy Introduction When people approach the subject of spirits and their releasement, there tends not to be a lot of middle ground. People have either been initiated with their own personal experience of spirits or not. People either believe in spirits or they don't. Some people feel very attracted to spirits and the spiritual dimensions. Some people feel very averse to spirits. For those that do believe in spirits, there are many forms of belief within this and many different styles to the releasement of spirits. There are many cultures around the world that believe in spirits and there are many people that believe spirits are affecting their daily life. Some of these people may come to you as a client and ask you to work with their inner world according to their beliefs and model of the world. Dealing with these events can be a significant part of resolving the issues of these people and they may bring it to you as a therapist as their primary presenting issue. In other cases, spirits may spontaneously interrupt your therapy sessions. Your client may suddenly make unusual movements, unusual noises, speak in an unusual voice, or when they do talk, it can appear to come from the perspective of an external entity and it may claim that it's an external entity. When this happens, it may not fit into the beliefs or model of the world of the client or the therapist at that time, but it may emerge as being the real issue that the client brought to the therapist. My own approach to spirits is to attempt to find a middle way and to remember that when we deal with spirits, we're doing spirit releasement therapy. So my major interest in spirits is to release them and achieve a therapeutic outcome for my client. So for me, this middle way means not running towards spirits and being attracted or overly interested in them, but also not running away from spirits, not being afraid of them or not discounting them and disbelieving and discrediting them because they don't initially fit within a model of reality that I may hold at a certain time. This course prefers to really only work with spirits if they arise spontaneously during a session of another primary modality like hypnotherapy, past life regression or some other form of spiritual healing. We then use SRT to utilize the experience the client is giving us. We respond to it, deal with it and then go back to our core modality, which is likely working indirectly with some of the effects and causes of spirit attachment. As therapists, we don't run towards spirit releasement therapy because we risk becoming like some of our clients who then need spirit releasement therapy. They're a little too interested in spirits and they can open the doors a little too widely. SRT is focused on talking to spirits mainly so that we can close the doors to excessive communication. And yet we don't refuse to communicate with spirits. We don't run away from them out of an aversion to the subject, out of a lack of belief or understanding, or because of our own personal discomfort or fear. As a therapist, you don't have to believe in spirits. You just have to be willing to work within the beliefs of your client or be willing to work with whatever experience arises in the moment. Later on reflection, you could update your beliefs. Until then, we could see spirit releasement therapy as an elaborate form of metaphor modeling and simply a chance to practice our therapeutic qualities of being non-judgmental, non-resistant and flexible. So we simply apply the SRT methodology as we've learned it almost as an experiment to see what happens out of our own curiosity. SRT can be practiced equally by therapists with or without a religious faith. It's pretty inclusive and includes within it a wide range of therapeutic techniques. It's flexible enough to fit with your faith. So if you like, you can invoke the name of Jesus. If you prefer, you can instead invoke the name of the light. For people that have fear or discomfort around spirits, SRT does acknowledge darkness and does go into how it works, but it also affirms the ultimate authority of the light. So a lot of this course will emphasize understanding and confidence. So SRT is really a lot about clarity. It's a lot less about fighting evil spirits and more about enlightening ignorant spirits. 
You may only need to do spirit releasement therapy very rarely in your career, or you may only experience it briefly in your life. And yet these short times may be some of the most influential times of your life. So it's best to be prepared to recognize them when they come and be able to deal with them and get the most from them when they do arise. My own journey began 20 years ago. At that time, I had no interest in spirits, but external events compelled me to explore their reality. It was those events and the process after of integrating it into my life that led me to make many changes and set me on the course to become a healer. So all the work that I've done in hypnotherapy and past life regression and NLP has been motivated and initiated by my first experiences with spirit releasement therapy. This course can help you digest and manage your own experiences or your client's experiences if they've already happened, or it can prepare you for the shock that may come if and when it does happen in future. For some, this shock can create some sort of fear, so this course can also be like a form of insurance. When some therapists don't understand what's happening and can't deal with it, they can react adversely and end up leaving the profession. It's a shame if this happens and it's not necessary. There are ways that we can deal with it so it becomes a big positive for our healing career and our personal development. If you're not a therapist or don't intend to become a therapist, this course could still help you understand and integrate some experiences you may be having or have had or that your loved ones may have been having or had so you can understand it yourself and maybe help them with their experiences. The end result of spirit releasement therapy can be quite enlightening. It can give both the client and the therapist a powerful, experiential lesson on overcoming the shadow with the light. It can help people overcome clinging to past people, events, behaviors, addictions, thought patterns. Ultimately, we're helping our client and ourselves explore our own perspective on ultimate truth. So at the end, we can return feeling more grounded, more present, and more at peace in the moment.